Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer today for January 19th, 2023. Glad that you are with me today. Today is National Popcorn Day, Artist as Outlaw Day, Brew a Potion Day, Get to Know Your Customers Day, Good Memory Day, Apparently Gun Appreciation Day. This is also part of the week of prayer for Christian unity, and I just now remembered that I actually have a whole set of slides for that specifically. So we will be using that. Behold how good and pleasant it is when kindred lo- live together in unity. It's like the precious oil on the head, running down upon the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down over the collar of his robes. Our reading for today comes from Matthew chapter 9, starting with verse 14. Listen for God's word to speak to you. Then the disciples of John came to Jesus, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, The wedding guests cannot mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them, can they? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. No one sets a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old cloak, for the patch pulls away from the cloak and a worse tear is made. Neither is new wine put into old wineskins, otherwise the skins burst and the wine is spilled, and the skins are destroyed, but new wine is put into fresh wineskins, and so both are preserved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, um, now we, we had a little bit of conflict between the Pharisees and Jesus because he's hanging out with the wrong kinds of people. Now there is a bit of a conflict between John's disciples and Jesus because of Jesus' disciples' religious practice. They have a question. Well, here's the thing. We, as John's disciples, we fast. And the Pharisees, who again, remember in the first century, these are well-respected people. Um, They are kind of religious elites, for good and for ill. Those those people also fast, and I'm sure they could come up with lots of other people who fast regularly. This is a, a practice of self, self-deprivation self for the purpose of focusing on God. Jesus did this exact thing when he went out into the wilderness that we heard on Sunday. So these disciples of John, they ask Jesus, well, why is it that your disciples do not fast? Why are you not participating in this age-old custom, this practice, this thing that we that actually unites us together? That we as the disciples of John, we really don't have a huge amount to do with the Pharisees. There's some enmity between our groups too, but you know what? We can come together in this fasting that we do. This is something that we can share together in. So What's up with y'all? You don't do it. And Jesus has a really interesting answer. Jesus says, well, the wedding guests don't mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them. What is it called when the bridegroom and the bride guests are together? Well, that's the reception. That's the wedding. That's the party. That's the, that's fun time, right? We're all gathered together. This is feast. You don't fast during a feast. There's no mourning during the feast. 
It's a time of celebration. It's a time of rejoicing. This is the time that we're in right now. It's a time of celebration and rejoicing. There's going to be a time when there will be fasting. When the bridegroom will be taken away. That time. At that time, they will fast. There will be a proper time for that, but this is not that time. And then he tells a sort of word picture. He tells a parable. No one sews a piece of unshrunk cloth onto an old cloak, for the patch pulls away from the cloak and the worst tear is made. Neither is new wine put into old wineskins, otherwise the skins burst. And the wine is spilled and the skill skins are destroyed, but new wine is put into fresh wineskins. So both are preserved. So why does he bring up this stuff? I think what he's saying here is that there is this traditional practice of fasting and it is good and it is helpful, right? But I'm doing something new here and I'm not just going to slap that old practice onto this new thing that is going on because that won't make sense. There will be a time when this will be this traditional practice of fasting will be incorporated into the Christian tradition. My disciples are going to fast when I'm taken away. Later disciples are going to take on fasting just as your disciples as a way of self-deprivation, a way of focusing on God, a way of focusing on prayer, of a way of focusing on the relationship between God and humanity. But we're just not going to adopt those things and fit them into something where it doesn't fit yet. We'll adopt it in. We'll, we'll bring those things in at the proper time with the proper sort of uh, motivation and understanding. Because Jesus is saying here implicitly, I'm doing something new. Behold, I am doing something new. This is not going to be the old wineskins that you have seen before. This is not the rigidity of the Pharisees. And even you all. This is something new. So, an allegory (laughs) from... A completely different world. Star Wars, one of my favorites, right? So when Disney took over Lucasfilm, right, bought up Lucasfilm, they said something really interesting about the, especially books that had come before. So in in the in-between time, after the movies had first been uh, films, right? The first set, first trilogy. And there was a long time before the next ones were. And during all that time, and during the time of the the prequel trilogy and after, there was this robust sort of list of books that were published telling, continuing on this sort of Star Wars story and c- filling out this universe. Um, it was loosely sort of overseen by uh, the publishing people who were in charge of it, but kind of wild west they could do whatever they want some of those books are really really great some of those books really not but it's all of this stuff right what disney said when they took over was hey these are great stories however they are not canon we can't be beholden to this you know 40 years of publishing that we had nothing to do with. We just, we can't do that. We're making a new story. And so all those things, great stories, they are legends, but we're going to do something else. And what has happened since then is they have taken some of those amazing characters from that extended universe and said, you know what? We really like Thrawn or whatever. 
we're going to bring him into this sort of canon universe. We're going to change some things, right? It's not going to be exactly the same, but we're going to bring sort of the the idea and the, the ultimate um, purpose for this character. And we're going to use them in this. And so they've sort of cherry picked the, the best stuff and brought it into this new thing and given it a new context and a new purpose and a new sort of overall idea and plan. They can't just take everything from the old and just dump it onto the new. It just doesn't work. This is what Jesus is saying, right? I'm doing something new and there are elements that from the old that are going to be brought in, but they can't just be plopped in there without consideration. So fasting is not appropriate now. It will be appropriate at a different time. We're not just taking all of the old things and plopping them into the new. We continue to have this discussion within the con the church, right? What are those things from our tradition that we want to carry forward? And what are those things that, you know what, maybe they are not meaningful at this point. Our tradition is one that currently is very, uh, it conforms to the liturgical calendar, right? We have seasons of, of Lent and Advent and ordinary time, Epiphany, you know, all of these sorts of things, right? That's not actually that, we haven't been doing it that terribly long because in the Protestant Reformation, many Protestants, most Protestants, except for the Lutherans, basically, just sort of gave up all of that stuff and said, oh, that's way too Catholic. We don't want to have anything to do with that. And then there was this season of sort of liturgical renewal. I think it started in the 1920s, somewhere in there. So again, not that long ago. And Protestant churches, mainline churches, decided, you know what? Hey, there's a lot of this great tradition. There's a lot of this sort of forming that we're missing out on. Why don't we take that and we'll bring it into our tradition and we'll give it our own spin and we'll give it our own understanding, but it can be useful and helpful for us. That's one of the great things about this sort of cross pollinization of Christian unity and ecumenism and interreligious conversation is that we can learn from one another. And there are things that our tradition does really, really well, and there's things that our tradition does really poorly. So how do we share and learn from one another? How do we learn some of these wonderful, beautiful, old, old, old practices from our siblings in the Catholic Church and the Lutheran Church and the Jewish tradition? Are they things that we can incorporate into our faith understanding and practice? That they can be formational in our faith, that we can understand them? Are there ways that our emphasis on sort of education and, and deep consideration of things, well, can it help other traditions where that's not the biggest thing? There are other traditions that are much better about spirit, following the spirit than we are. And are there ways that we can learn from them? There's a time for these things. There's, there's a purpose to these traditions, but we can't just take from one and plop into the another. That doesn't work that way. And so Jesus calls, yes, to religious practice. But not as this sort of just adopting. Not just this, this is the way we do things because this is the way we do things. But to consider the time and the purpose, and the plan. So what are some things that maybe you have grown up with that are not part of your practice anymore? What are some things that are not part of your practice anymore or uh, that were, ne were not part of your practice 
that you have come to dearly love. What are some things that you have seen from other traditions that have helped you be formed into the person that you are and your practice of faith? How can we humbly learn from each other and grow with one another? It's the things to consider today. If you need a little bit more time to, to think through those things, go ahead and pause this and jot down some notes or meditate or think. Consider these questions. But now let's join our hearts together in prayer. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. O God, in you I trust. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn, bringing the glory of our risen Lord who makes every day new. We especially thank you for the beauty of your creation. the new creation in Christ and all gifts of healing and forgiveness. The sustaining love of family and friends. The fellowship of faith in your church. Merciful God of might, renew this weary world. Heal the hurts of your children and bring about your peace for all in Christ Jesus, the living Lord. Especially we pray for those who govern nations of the world. The people in country is ravaged by strife and warfare. All who work for peace and international harmony. All who strive to save the earth from destruction. The Church of Jesus Christ in every land. People of God, for what else do we pray? We pray for friends of Beverly's, for victims of violent crimes in our city, for Clinton, the brother of Judy's best friend who's in the hospital with suspected brain and lung cancer. We pray for a confidential request. For Ed, who turned 100 years old this last week, and for Robin, who is continuing to recover. For Hector, Tony's father, who's been moved to a care facility. For Kimberly and her family, as well as all those many prayers that we have on our hearts and our minds. Oh God, you are the giver of life. We pray for the church and the whole world. Sanctify her life. Renew her worship. Give power to her witnessing. Restore her unity. Give strength to those who are searching together for that kind of obedience which creates unity. 
Heal the division separating your children one from another, so that they will make fast with bonds of peace the unity which the Spirit gives. Amen. Now let us continue in prayer and be united with siblings across time and space as we say together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now the God of peace be with us. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thank you so much for joining me today for daily prayer. Join me tomorrow for some more. Like this video, share it with someone else. Click on the subscription and the notification button. Go to our face our, our website, johncalvinchurch.org, and follow us on Facebook, Instagram. You can join us for daily prayer on Substack and Spotify. All of these things. Uh, our liturgy today came from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church, USA, and our readings came from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Have a blessed day, and we'll see you next time.